What would happen if there was a full-scale nuclear war between Russia and the United States? Based on non-classified data, the aftermath might go something like this. When one side launches nuclear missiles, the other side detects them and fires back before impact. U.S. submarine-launched ballistic missiles from west of Norway start striking Russia after about 10 minutes, and Russian ones from north of Canada start hitting the U.S. a few minutes later. The very first strikes are high-altitude EMP attacks, frying electronics and power grids by creating an electromagnetic pulse of tens of thousands of volts per meter. The next strikes target command and control, as well as nuclear launch facilities. Land-based intercontinental ballistic missiles take about half an hour to arrive. Major cities are targeted, both because they contain military facilities and to stymie the enemy's post-war recovery. Some cruise missiles take hours to reach their target. Each impact creates a fireball about as hot as the core of the sun, followed by a radioactive mushroom cloud. These intense explosions vaporize people nearby and cause fires and blindness further away. The fireball expansion then causes a blast wave that damages buildings, crushing nearby ones. The United Kingdom and France have nuclear capabilities and are obliged by NATO's Article 5 to defend the U.S. So Russia hits them too. Firestorms engulf many cities, where storm-level winds fan the flames, igniting anything that can burn, melting glass and some metals, and turning asphalt into flammable hot liquid. But the explosions, the electromagnetic pulse, and the radioactivity aren't the worst part. Nuclear winter is, caused by the black carbon smoke from the nuclear firestorms. The Hiroshima atomic bomb caused such a firestorm, but today's hydrogen bombs are much more powerful. A large city like Moscow, with almost 50 times more people, can create much more smoke. And a firestorm sends plumes of black smoke up into the stratosphere, far above any rain clouds that would otherwise wash out the smoke. This black smoke gets heated by sunlight, lofting it like a hot air balloon for up to a decade. High altitude jet streams are so fast that it takes only a few days for the smoke to spread across much of the northern hemisphere. In the meantime, Earth gets freezing cold, even during the summer, with farmland in Kansas cooling by about 20 degrees centigrade, or 40 degrees Fahrenheit, and other regions cooling almost twice as much. A recent scientific paper estimates that over 5 billion people could starve to death including around 99% of those in the United States, Europe, Russia, and China. We obviously don't know how many people will survive a nuclear war. But if it's even remotely as bad as scientists think, then it has no winners, merely losers. And that's the play-by-play -play according to prophecy. All right, Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai Bahasham Rakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And double salutations to all you Akim out there laboring. The house of David, the elect, that's pushing his word with all truth, righteousness, and sincerity. Shalom to you, brothers. And shalom to the elect. I'm back with another quick lesson through the Holy Spirit, the Rakak Wadash. All right, this is more news and prophecy. World War III, nuclear war is going to happen. This is the will of the Lord. This article here is from americasfirstreport.com. And the title it reads, it says, Is the federal government preparing Americans for a nuclear attack? It says over the past year, much has been said and done with regard to medical countermeasures in the event of a nuclear attack. Numerous federal agencies have been quietly updating preparedness plans. And at least one expert has come forward to state that this is still not enough. And the United States needs to become better prepared for a potential radiological disaster. 
Could it be that the powers that be know what is coming? Exactly. Because they're the ones that's sponsoring it. All right. They're the ones that's funding the wars. OK. And they're being used as the left hand of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh to bring forth this nuclear war. All right. Could it be that the powers that be know what is coming? Know what is coming? Or perhaps what they themselves are planning the point. Because we're in the midst of a poly crisis, man, where you have multiple crises playing out on the earth at the same time to further sow confusion, chaos, and destruction in the earth. All right, leading up to that final world's war, which is going to be the end all be all of all wars. It says, or perhaps they themselves are planning and are frantically trying to get prepared for horrors, right? Frantically trying to get frantically trying to get prepared for horrors that are soon to come and that's why let me get that in uh luke those horrors right let's get that in luke 21 and 36 okay let's start up a little bit so this is luke 21 and 34 and it reads it says and take heed unto yourselves and take heed to yourselves let it lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffiting and drunkenness and cares of this life so that that day come upon you unawares. What day is that? The, the day of destruction, right? That's why we're supposed to be detached from this world, all right? Because what, what are we preparing for? We're preparing for this great and terrible day, all right? And we're looking to be saved from it by Yahweh Shai and the angels, right? It says, for as a snare, it should come on all them that dwell on the face of the whole earth, all right? This destruction. The point, verse 36, watch ye therefore and pray always <clears throat> and pray always that you may be accounted, that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. All right, let's read that in the NLT. Right, because we're we're praying that we're accounted worthy to escape the horrors, right? Luke 21, 36 NLT says, keep alert at all times and pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the son of man. Exactly. So those horrors, if you will. All right, are coming upon the earth. Are they frantically trying to get prepared for horrors that are soon to come? All right. They're inevitable. All right. It says <clears throat> all throughout the media and across the government spectrum, talk of nuclear war is increasing. We are hearing about the hostile nuclear armed nations, both in the news and in entertainment, with the quote new Oppenheimer film being Hollywood's way of grooming the public for what is seemingly soon to come for America. Right. As I said in my previous lesson, when I went into that um and to Jay Oppenheimer, man, the father of the atomic bomb, which was a 48er. I said that the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Shai is putting emphasis on that movie because that's what's getting ready to play out on the earth. That's what's getting ready to happen to America. So this is all the spirit of the Lord. You see, it says, jumping down, it says, um, we just came out of a demic and you can see that there's a lot of gaps when it comes to, to coordination and messaging, said Amesh Adalja, MD from the John Hopkins University Center for Health, Security in Baltimore. All that is going to be very critical for response to an IND, improve, improvised nuclear device explosion. How close are we to potential nuclear war? Adalja unpacked with precise clarity all the emergency response measures that have already been implemented, as well as who will be running them. He named the Department of Health and Human Services, Administration for Strate Strategic Preparedness and Response, as well as the Centers for Disease Control Prevention and Nature and Natural Salaki and, and National Center for Environmental Health. All right. Right. So let's let's get the scripture here. Okay. So this is Jeremiah chapter 51, verse 45, and it reads, it says, my people, all right, you Israelites, my people go you out of the midst of her, speaking about Babylon, America, and deliver ye every man his soul 
from the fierce anger of the Lord, Yahweh Bashim Yahweh and nuclear destruction. <clears throat> nuclear destruction is part of the fierce anger of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh He's going to use the missiles, the ICBMs, the warheads to fully do away with this place, right? Jeremiah 51 and 46, it says, and, and this is why we're supposed to be de uh, uh, detached from America, all right? Removing our spirits from the mindset of Babylon, man. Coming back into the truth, serving the power of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai, spirit and truth, so that we may have that hedge and protection in that time of judgment, that we may escape the horrors as we just read in Luke 21, all right? That you pray that you might be strong enough to escape these coming horrors and stand before the Son of Man. All right. Jeremiah 51 and 46. Unless your heart faint and you fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. All right. What is the rumor? Nuclear war, destruction. Okay. All these nations preparing to shoot ICBM nuclear missiles over here to America. That's the rumor. All right. Putin just said hell to hell with the West. All right. These are all the rumors of war. And ye shall fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year. And after that, another year shall come a rumor. And violence in the land. Ruler against ruler. You see that? So we're hearing all these things on a daily basis. All right. The talks of, of nuclear destruction. OK, the government preparing the American people for a nuclear attack. All right. Which they call uh, mad, which is uh, uh, mutually assured destruction. Right. And they have videos play play out, you know, over time. Programming the people to prepare for a nuclear attack. OK, so it's coming. <clears throat> you know. Let's grab this, too, because the elites, they are prepared. OK, this is Revelation six. OK, dealing with the evils. All right. The evils and death that the Lord is going to uh, uh, play out on the earth when you read the beginning from this chapter. But we're going to jump down here to verse 12. This is Revelation six and 12. The six seal terror. It says Revelation six and 12. <clears throat> Revelation six and 12. And it reads, it says, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo. There was a great earthquake and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. And this is dealing with that. Um, this is dealing with that nuclear fallout. All right. Matter of fact, let me get that back in the clip. It just showed you post uh, the post destruction. All right. Where the sun in the sky is going to become dark due to that nuclear fallout. Let's play that again. All right. <clears throat> 50 times more people can create much more smoke. And a firestorm sends plumes of black smoke up into the stratosphere, far above any rain clouds that would otherwise wash out the smoke. This black smoke gets heated by sunlight, lofting it like a hot air balloon for up to a decade. High altitude jet streams are so fast that it takes only a few days for the smoke to spread across much of the northern hemisphere. You see, so like the scripture said, Right. Revelation 6 and 12. And I beheld when I when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. You know, the missiles hitting the earth and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. Yeah, that nuclear fallout. You know, on how it's going to cover the earth as we, we were just uh, uh, watching in the video here. All right. It's going to block out the sky. All right. Let me add on to that. There's another precept for that, too, in Isaiah 34. Going into that nuclear fallout, that mushroom cloud, right? Isaiah 34 and 4 says, All the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved, and the, he and the heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll, all right? That mushroom cloud. And all their hosts shall fall down, as the leaf falleth from the vine, and as from the fig fall, as a, as a falling fig from the tree, with them ICBMs hitting the earth. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea, which is Greek for Esau, Edom, and upon the people of my curse to judgment. All right. This is what's going to happen to America, Babylon. All right. 
back in Revelation 6 and 13. And it reads, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth. All right. And really, Esau's power structure is going to be utterly destroyed. All right. And the stars of heaven fell to the earth. Even as a fig tree cast if her untimely figs, those ICBMs, those missiles, those warheads, when she is shaken of a mighty wind, which is going to be that nuclear wind that's going to consume the foundation of, of America. Verse 14, and the heavens departed as a scroll when it is rolled together, right? That mushroom cloud. And every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And, and this destruction is what's going to rearrange the earth. That's the creation of a new heaven and a new earth. Every mountain and island were moved out of their places, man. Right? That's how violent this destruction is going to be. Verse 15. And the kings of the earth. Who are the kings of the earth today? The powers that be. All right? Started with Esau, Edom, and the rest of these heathen nations, which are preparing, as we're reading here, right? Which are preparing for that horrible, uh, 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 for the horrors to come. Could it be that the powers that be know what is coming or perhaps what they what they themselves are planning? Right. Revelation 6 and 15 and the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men. All right. The elite. And the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens in the rocks and in the rocks of the mountains. Right. Because they have the bunkers. Right. They have the uh, uh, deep. What was it called? Dumb, deep underground military bases. They have the uh, 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 the retreats in the mountains. They have the uh, the uh, uh, the retreats under the ocean or whatnot and secluded parts of the earth. All right. So they're already there hiding out and preparing for this day. All right. It says and said to the mountains and rocks fall on us and hide us from the face of him. That sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the land, all right? Because they know that Yahweh Shema Washai is coming to get them, right? And this is their way of, of, of fleeing from the wrath of the Lord, right? Which which they are going to survive that destruction, all right, to be the first fruits of slavery when they get pulled out of those uh, those rocks, out of those hiding places, man. You know? It says. For the great day of his wrath has come. Who shall be able to stand? Nobody, man. All right. That's that terrible. That's that great and terrible day of the Lord, which is soon to come upon the earth, you know, which is soon to totally uh, 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 consume and destroy America, man. You know, there's no way around it. Let's get this too. This is. um. This is 2nd Ezra chapter 16 in verse 1 and it reads, it says, Woe be unto thee, Babylon and Asia, woe be unto thee, Egypt and Syria. All right. Gird up yourselves with cloths of sack of hair. So like you gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair, be well your children and be sorry for your destruction is at hand. So as we saw in this video, right, this destruction is going to it's going to affect the whole planet Earth. All right. This is the uh, uh, this is the will of Yahweh Shema Washai. This is prophecy here. OK, it's going to affect the planet. Right. A sword is sent upon you and who may turn it back? A fire is sent among you who may quench it. All right. Because this fire is going to be unquenchable. OK, as the apostles were bringing out in a, in a lesson. All right. This fire is going to. Uh, is going to have to burn out on his own, right? Same chapter, Isaiah 34. Okay, we'll read down to it. Back in Isaiah 34, in verse 6, it says, The sword of the Lord, Yahweh Shema Washai, is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with the blood of lambs and goats and with the fat of the kidneys of rams for the Lord, Yahweh Shema Washai, have a sacrifice in Basra, all right, which is the capital of Edom. And a great slaughter in the land of Idumea, which could be applied to America, Babylon, all right? And, and, and the wicked, all right, two-thirds, these Edomites and these heathen are going to be part of that sacrifice, right, as we're reading here. 
It says, And the unicorn shall come down with them, and the bullocks with the bulls, and their land shall be soaked with blood, and their dust made fat with fatness. For it is, for it is the day of the Lord, Yahweh Shemelashai's vengeance, in the year of recompenses for the controversy of Zion, all right, for all the for all the uh, uh, controversy that was done unto the Lord's people. All right, the scriptures say that he was going to plead his cause for Zion. All right, he's going to bring violence and destruction for what happened to the apple of his eye, his people. And streams thereof shall be turned into pitch, and the dust thereof into brimstone, and the land, should thereof, and the land thereof shall become burning pitch. Right? It's going to be a lake of fire. It should not be quenched night or day. The smoke thereof shall not, the, the smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. All right. So this place is going to have to physically burn out on its own. It's not going to be any water to quench it. All right. It's just going to burn until it burns itself out. All right. It's going to, it's going to burn for a long period of time. You see, going back, 2nd Ezra 16 to 4, a fire is sent among you, and who, and who may quench it, right? Plagues are sent unto you, and what is he that may drive them away? May any man drive away an, an hungry lion in the wood, or may anyone quench the fire in, in stubble when it have begun to burn, you see? May one turn again the arrow that is shot of a strong archer. Right. So when those missiles are shot from one end of, of heaven to the other, there's no turning back. The mighty Lord, Yahweh Shema Washai, send the plagues. And who is he that can drive them away? No one. A fire shall go forth from his wrath. And who is he that may quench it? Right. He shall cast lightnings and who shall not fear? He shall thunder and who shall not be afraid? The Lord, Yahweh Shema Washai, shall threaten who shall not be utterly beaten to powder at his presence. Right? The earth quaketh and the foundations thereof, the sea ariseth up with waves from the deep and the waves of it are troubled. And the fishes thereof also before the Lord, Yahweh Shema Washai, before the glory of his power. Behold the plagues, Salakia. Verse 13, for strong is his right hand that bendeth the bow, his arrows that he shooteth are sharp. Those are the missiles and shall not miss when they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, which was shown in this video. Right. You know, those arrows being shot. This is what we see here, man. The, the, the missiles being shot from from America to Russia, you know. From China to America, North Korea, Iran. It's going to be missiles shot through all over the earth, man. All right. They come from one end of heaven to the other, as the scriptures say. All right. So this video is straight up prophecy, man. Right. It says. <clears throat> reading it again, verse 13, second, Ezra, uh, six and 16 and 13. For strong is his right hand that bent at the bow. His arrows that he shooteth are sharp and shall not miss when they begin to, to be shot into the ends of the world. When they begin to be shot into the ends of the world, man. Okay, that's going to be that great and terrible day. Okay. Verse 14, behold, the plagues are sent and shall not return again until they come upon the earth. The fire is kindled and shall not be put out till it consume the foundation of the earth. Right? Like as an arrow which is shot of a mighty archer, returneth not backwards, even so the plagues that are sent, so like even so the plagues that shall be sent upon the earth shall not return again. All right? So there's no stopping those warheads, those missiles from hitting their targets. All right? It says, Woe is me. Woe is me, who will deliver me in those days? And those days are upon us. All right? It's happening, man. It's going to happen in your lifetime, whether you want to accept it or not. All right? The day, the day of the Lord vastly approaches the earth, man. Okay? It says, 2nd Ezra 16 and 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars, right? 
right now, as we speak, Ukraine is attacking uh, uh, Moscow, Russia right now, which is going to spill over to World War Three. OK, because as 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 is already out there, as it is already known, America is funding Ukraine with weaponry, with with, uh, 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 you know, with the missiles and in the in the. In the in the in the uh, ammunition and all of that, all right. So this thing is really about this to to spill over to World War Three, all right. The beginning of wars and the powers shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? Right. Just to add on to some more of this news here, right. Here's another article. All right. It says the top seven ways Democrats in D.C. plan on reducing the population. Right. This is all playing out simultaneously, right? So anyway, let's jump down. Let's just read a little bit. All right, so jumping down here. It says. It says the top seven ways the U.S. government plans on reducing the population by 50 percent or more over the next few years. All right. And we've been seeing that. As of lately, right? Point number one, all right? The juice, all right? Especially the juice reduce the population by injecting known neurotoxins and vascular clotting spike proteins that exacerbate pre existing health trauma while causing new and deadly con conditions. So, this is why people are catching. Heart attacks and, and, and collapsing. Right? That's all part of the plan. The funding in the funding uh number two, the funding, funding the engineering of quote novel lab concocted juices that kill off the elderly, immune compromised, obese children, babies, and fetuses, right? Embezzling trillions of dollars to drive inflation higher, causing the poor. And destitute to starve to death and and die of preventable diseases, right? That's part of it, right? People forgot about the supply chain shortages, the famine, all right? We're in the midst of hyperinflation. Everything is is crazy expensive. People are, are, are struggling, right? And it's all contributing to the famine. As we just read here, it said uh, 2nd Ezra 16, 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death. You see, that's all part of the uh, reducing the population. It says forcing everyone to stop using fossil fossil fuels. All farming and distribution of food will come to a halt, creating massive famine across the country soon. Right. Because what's the what's the uh, what has been the narrative? Climate change. You know, natural natural disasters. We got to stop farming. Farmers have to stop farming. To reduce carbon emission, you got to get we got to get rid of the cows and chickens, right? They're putting too much um, uh, 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 carbon in the atmosphere, which is causing global warming. All this bullshit, all right? This is all designed to bring forth that massive famine, all right? Starvation, which is all the judgment of the Lord. Number five, drastically drastically reduce or eliminate the food supply by wrecking the supply chain. While poisoning the meat and dairy industries, right? All this food is garbage. All right, it's full of a, uh, it's full of a uh, uh, poison. You know, they they've been injecting the animals with toxins, right? And promoting the consumption of bugs, insects, and worms, right? As as uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Klaus Schla uh, Klaus Schlob, he said, you should eat the bugs, right? You should eat. You know, uh, meat or uh, burgers made out of feces, all this stuff that's being promoted. Drinking sewage water. All right. Bill Gates, he I remember he brought out, you know, uh, uh, drinking basically sewage water and shit, man. All right. There was another article that came out on how, how they were uh, fertilizing crops with um, de uh, decompo decomposed human uh, human parts. You see, this is straight up hell, man. It says. Number six, promote abortions. Heavily think Planned Parenthood, including during the third trimester, even on the day of the birth of the child, man. And, and they've been pushing that. 
It says, convince all liberals and leftists and leftists to promote and advocate for the mutilation of children's genitalia called bottom surgery in the name of gender fluidity so they all could become infertile mutant transformer zombies. <laughs> right? So this place is, is, is over, man. And all these things are happening. All right? All, all one through seven of them. You see? But anyway, going back to the scripture. All right, verse 18 again. Second Ezra 16 and 18, the beginning of sorrows and great mourners, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear. The beginning of evils. What shall I do when these evils shall come? So we see all these evils playing out on the earth, man. All right, all seven of these bullet points that we read here. All right, this place is done. All right. It says, behold, verse 19, behold, famine and plague, tribulation and anguish are sent as scourges for amendment. These are the judgments, the penalties, man. All right. That the Lord has has uh, uh, put upon America, man. Famine, plague, tribulation and anguish. All right. Destruction, turmoil. Are sent as scourges for amendment. But for all these things, they shall not turn from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the scourges, right? Because people are just going to continue to live how they want to live, all right? They're going to continue to live a, a, a lawless type of lifestyle until the Lord brings forth the hammer, all right? Till these people get put to death, you see? Verse 21, behold, victu victuals shall be, shall be good cheap upon the earth, that they should think themselves to be in a good case. And even and even then shall evils grow upon the earth, sword, famine and great confusion, which all those things are happening. Going back to that term called poly crisis, man, the, the multiple crises that are playing out upon the earth at the same time, man. All right. Before the destruction comes, the earth is going to continue to wax worse and worse. For many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine. Right. Many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish from famine, right? Everything is set in motion to reduce the population, man. The famine, all right, the um, the juice, okay, that, people that, have, that, that, that the people have been dying from, right? All the immorality that's going on, you know? This place is, 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 is on its way out, okay? It says, <clears throat> for many of them that dwell upon the earth shall perish of famine and the other that escape the hunger shall the sword destroy, right? Because you're talking about the time of martial law, great famine in the land, lockdowns, all right? More pestilence, more diseases, right? All these things are going to continue to grow upon the earth as we as we get towards the end of this um you know, the end of this age, if you will, right? It says, and the dead shall be cast out as dung and there should be no man to comfort them and the, for the earth shall be wasted and the city shall be cast down. There you have it, man. So, you know, nothing but um, ill times are set to come, you know, forth upon the earth, man. So that's the time we're living in, news and prophecy, man. This is all the will of Yahweh by Shem al Shai, all right? I pray that this quick lesson was edifying, man. All right. You know, we, we we are here to continue to warn you to blow the trumpet of the destruction that's getting ready to happen. All right. So take heed to 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 the to the uh, uh, to the words of the Lord, man. Giving all praise, honor and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakwadash, double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone and double salutations to all you Akim out there laboring. A hey, Shalom.